The Arabian Peninsula is a forbidding land of baking deserts and endless emptiness. Two words capture its entire history. Islam and oil. On August 10th, in the year 610, Islam was born in this cave, on this mountain, near the town of Mecca. After Muslim warriors exploded out of Arabia and conquered much of the known world, the peninsula remained a land of wandering nomads and little else of note. For the next 13 centuries, the Arabian Peninsula was ruled by a succession of tribal dynasties. Its economy was largely based on religious tourism, pilgrimages of devout Muslims to the holy city of Mecca. In 1933, King Abdulaziz founded the modern Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, and the new kingdom's fortunes changed dramatically on March 3, 1938. On that historic day, an American oil company, later to be known as Chevron, discovered oil near Dahran. The king made a grandly ceremonial visit to see the first tanker full of oil depart the Saudi coast. Saudi Arabia soon became the largest single source of petroleum in the world. The windfall was, however, a curse as well as a blessing. A consortium of oil companies, formerly known as the Seven Sisters and now called Big Oil, controlled the global oil market. They dictated the share of profits that oil producing countries like Saudi Arabia would get for their products. In the early 1970s, the major oil producing countries, including Saudi Arabia, flexed their muscles. They created the Organization of the Petroleum Exporting Countries, known as OPEC, and nationalized their oil industries. And thus began a great game of international petroleum chess. The United States has been an avid player because although the United States is the largest producer of oil in the world, it needs imports from Saudi Arabia and other petroleum exporting countries to meet its energy needs. Since the 1970s, virtually all American presidents have visited Saudi Arabia. American presidents have sent American troops to defend Saudi Arabia. In my direction, elements of the 82nd Airborne Division, as well as key units of the United States Air Force, are arriving today to take up defensive positions in Saudi Arabia. American presidents have pressured Congress to allow the sale of advanced American weaponry to Saudi Arabia. Well, I want to express my gratitude to the members of the United States Senate for their approval of the sale of the AWACS defense system to Saudi Arabia. And that's for their protection, but if you look in terms of dollars, $3 billion, $533 million, $525 million, that's peanuts for you. Should have increased it. But 
American presidents are not the only players on the petroleum chessboard. President Vladimir Putin of Russia has used oil and gas as a collateral weapon against the West. Putin appears to have had a large role in persuading Saudi Arabia to limit its oil production. The Saudi cutback will cause oil prices to rise for American consumers. Checkmate? Well, that remains to be seen. We're going to react to Saudi Arabia and uh, we will take action.